Far from our world and unknown lands, children move mountains to get to school. The seemingly straightforward daily journey that we take for granted is a real adventure for children elsewhere. Nasta, the little girl from a shanty town. Alfredo, the blind kid from Mexico. And Mabali, the pygmy from Cameroon, are our three everyday heroes. Against all odds, they manage to make their way to school. A four-month-old, Nasta was sneaked into my oat one night in her mother's arms aboard a small boat. This little girl who survived the water now crosses the shantytown four times a day to attend school. Only nine years old, Nasta walks alone through the labyrinth of corrugated metal. One and a half hours a day spent negotiating the dusty tracks. Mabali is a young pygmy, aged 13. He lives in the heart of darkness, far from the nearest road in the humidity of the rainforest. Every term, he must cross the jungle to attend primary school classes, a three-hour trek through the slippery clay hills of southern Cameroon. Alfredo was born blind. He has never seen Mexico City. He can sense the power, the rumbling, the smells, and the heat. Every day, he crosses one of the world's largest cities from north to south to attend a school for visually impaired children. In Bipindi, southern Cameroon, the muggy rainforest stretches out as far as the eye can see. During the academic year, Mabali stays at the Our Lady of the Forest home, a several hours walk from his encampment. Mabali is a child of the ethnic group known as the Bageli Pygmies, a minority numbering no more than 4,500 spread over various encampments in southern Cameroon, a far cry from the modern world. At the Our Lady of the Forest home, the children live as a community, Mabali is always surrounded by his gang of friends, who all hail from the same village. They've known each other from childhood. The school boarding house is a humanitarian project funded by the generosity of the international community. Thanks to this facility, Mabali has been able to attend school since he was six. He is perhaps the first Bagyali to study for higher education. The school is close to the home, standing at the end of the track beneath the mango trees of a shaded courtyard. J'ai l'impression qu'il y a quelques uns qui n'ont pas brossé leurs dents ce matin. Faut dire la vérité, qui n'a pas brossé ses dents ce matin? On contrôle? Qui n'a pas brossé ses dents là-bas au cours moyen Ah, tu... Voilà. Voilà. Chaque fois, passe devant. Passe devant. Ah oui. Chaque fois, toi, tu ne brosses jamais tes dents. Mais on te laisse aujourd'hui parce que tu as dit la vérité. Oh. 
Mayotte in the Indian Ocean is the 101st French Territorial Department. For the last 10 years or so, migrants from the neighboring Comoros Islands have erected corrugated iron villages across the hillside. Tens of thousands of them have set up shanty towns whose names conjure up tragic places around the world. Kosovo, Soweto, Gaza. This is where Comoros Islanders live, entrenched in a clandestine existence on the fringes of Mayotte society. Nasta's parents built their hut here eight years ago. On Sunday mornings, the rice pudding shared with her three brothers and sister as a weekend treat for the children. The shack open to the four winds is all the little girl has ever known rented by her parents for 50 euros a month from a slum landlord. Nasta finds her escape in her school books and the dancing words that describe another world. Pour, pour, pour vie, pousse, pousser, poussette, poussière, poussard, poupe, poupée, 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 poupée. There is no water supply or running water in the Kosovo shanty town. For the weekly washing, the family's only option is to go down to the river. Tuausia, Nasta's mother, is 33 years old. She works all week in a cleaning job, paid 90 cents an hour. On this French island, the family live on barely 200 euros a month. In Kosovo, bottles of drinking water cost seven times the normal price. Hence, the whole family washes in the river, saturated with detergent. But Nasta loves Sunday mornings when the whole family is together. In Mexico, living on a steep slope on a hillside is no obstacle to playing football. As soon as Alfredo hears his friends kicking a ball, he wants to run and join them. His friends are always ready to come and fetch him. Three generations of women live in Alfredo's house. There's his great-grandmother, the doyenne, Miranda, his grandmother, and Joselita, his young single mother. Alfredo has two little brothers, a six-month-old baby and Angel, who is eight. He dreams of being a musician. It's a passion his mother encourages. In accordance with Mexican custom, on Alfredo's 12th birthday, his grandmother has a surprise for her grandson. 
she's ordered a basket of pan dulce from the local baker and invited all his friends over. This morning, Kai Sen, Nasta's elder brother, has left early, heading for the hills to cut two wooden sticks for his sister. Mayot is getting ready for an annual sporting event, one that is eagerly anticipated by all the kids on the island. It's a big day for the shantytown children. Nasta has signed up for the race. For the first time, her father has given his permission to take part. Nasir was a builder back on his native island of Anjouan. He sacrificed his career so that his children could go to school here on Mayotte, where he does not have the right to work. The race calls for a few accessories, two wooden sticks and an old scooter tire. In Mayotte, the tire race is a tradition that dates back 30 years. All the island's children take part, both Mayotte natives and migrant children from the Comoros Islands, living in Kosovo, Sueto, Gaza, and the other shanty towns. The race is a rare opportunity for Nasta to get out of the house. Separated from her brothers, Nasta is a little nervous about the crowd and the absence of her parents, who, fearing a police check, have not accompanied her. Primary school English is a simple recitation in Bipindi Pygmy schools. Mabali had to learn French to attend classes. With his family and friends, he speaks Pegeli, his ethnic tongue. He's a good pupil, but sometimes gets mixed up when calculating surface areas and perimeters. The young pygmies are schooled in a private Catholic establishment. All expenses are paid for by the home. In exchange, the children carry out a few chores, just as they would at their encampment in the forest. While the young pygmies may sometimes struggle to work out the surface area of a rectangle, the great forest holds no secrets for them. Mm. 
Mabali often longs for his life in the jungle. It's a kind of homesickness, a forest melancholy. In Mayotte, the tire race does not go off in its usual upbeat manner. Lost in the pre-race throng, Nasta senses the wave of concern that has gripped the organizers. Gangs of young Comoros Island migrants protesting against expulsions have announced their intention to attack the race. Despite the threat, the start signal is given. The race is two kilometers long with the finish in Mamudzu, the capital of Mayotte. Eyes fixed on her scooter tire, Nasta tries to overcome her feelings of anxiety. The gangs have attacked the end of the road. Stones and bottles have been thrown, and broken glass is scattered across the road surface. Nasta is unwittingly heading towards the disturbances. The forces of law and order are overwhelmed. The race is quickly called off. Nasta has to run to escape a cloud of acidic gas from a tear gas grenade. The fact that she is an innocent nine-year-old will be no protection against the threats that punctuate the life of a little girl with no residence papers. After the race, Nasta's father, Nasur, was hoping to take his family to the seaside, back to the beach where they first arrived one night on a clandestine boat. On the shore, amid the crashing waves and the noisy bathers, he wants Nasta and her brother to realize they are different and understand that only education will allow them to integrate into Mayotte society. Getting up every school day at 5 a.m. calls for the tender firmness of a grandmother. Miranda wants to give her grandchildren the strength to face the day. To get to school, Alfredo and his little brother need to cross Mexico City from north to south. And Hell is eight. He is Alfredo's little brother. On the way to school, he will be his big brother's eyes, his lookout as they cross Mexico City. Before dawn on the heights of the great city at an altitude of over 2,200 meters, the outside temperatures are cold. When the cold air rushes through the children's hoods and squeezes their legs together, Alfredo knows it's time to set off on the two-hour journey to school. He loves this moment of coolness and the illusion of pure air. Alfredo, es mejor que ya no se pudimos embajar. Te digo por qué? 
porque ya está amaneciendo. The little brother keeps his eyes peeled for any danger along the way. Meanwhile, Alfredo inspires courage and faith in young and hell. Miren muy llenos, Ángel. Ese camión va lleno, Ángel. The Our Lady of the Forest home, no one wants to miss the best breakfast of the week. <laughs> Astonishingly, this morning, these plates have no takers. Mabali and his friends have gone missing. They left the home at dawn to return to their encampments. Mabali has come back to Mashwer Mashwer, his village in the middle of the forest, three hours walk away from school. His friends have accompanied him on his irresistible flight. Forty or so Begeli pygmies live in Mashwer Mashwer, where community life is founded on the tradition of sharing. <laughs> Here, young pygmies run free. Their only responsibility is the daily quest for food. The moment they arrive, children too young to hunt set about finding their meal. Peppers for sauce, along with mango and papaya. Gathering starchy foods is a much more dangerous business. The breadfruit tree must be climbed. At 15 meters high, it is the tallest tree in the encampment. Mabali volunteers to climb the tree. The fruit will be boiled for the meal. It tastes a little like potato. On today's menu is breadfruit picked by Mabali and portions of a large viper hunted by the men. The delicate flesh is delicious and the children love it. <laughs> After the meal, Mabali helps his father in the fields. Jules's children have inherited from him all the richness of Bageli culture. But he knows that if his ethnic group is to survive, it is vital that the pygmy children have access to education. 
Donc quand vous, je vous demande d'aller à l'école, mes enfants, ce n'est pas parce que je ne vous aime pas. C'est pour découvrir d'autres choses, pour connaître d'autres choses. Parce que tu vas dire que parce que je connais faire la chasse, voilà pourquoi je dois négliger l'école. Non, il faut plutôt connaître tous les deux. Quand on est au village, on doit apprendre les travaux du village. Quand on est en ville, à l'école, on doit aller à l'école pour apprendre les choses modernes. C'est pour cela que je vous demande d'aller à l'école. Je veux que vous soyez plus que moi. For the last half hour, Alfredo and Angel have been heading towards the center of Mexico City, the first stage of their journey. The children are lost amid the cars, caught up in the teeming traffic. Alfredo dreams that his white stick is a magic wand with the power to part the waves of automobiles. They are the tightrope walkers of the sidewalk, the acrobats of the crossroads. When they reach the subway, the children know the long corridors and escalators leading to the trains by heart. And hell keeps Alfredo well away from the track. There are so many trains, the little brother is always afraid of boarding the wrong one. Their biggest fear is losing each other. Either would be completely lost without the other. If ever Angel loses Alfredo, they have a plan. They'll meet at the following station. Sometimes when they are ahead of schedule on the way, they play at scaring each other. But the prospect of being alone and losing a brother is a nightmare. In Kosovo, Nasta wakes up to the early morning acrid smell of burning trash. 
With a lack of provisions, breakfast will have to wait. The steep pathway Nasta must take to get to her school is her own personal burden. The effort that justifies their exile, the hardship and humiliation of their covert existence. In the day of a nine-year-old, a 20-minute walk between worlds repeated four times a day is a big adventure. The pathway is a maze with countless opportunities to get lost, to forget a bend, or to rip a sandal on an exposed tree root. It's vital that Nasta gets to school before 7 a.m. When she sees the houses of expatriates on the hill overlooking the school, Nasta knows she is entering another world. She does not like to linger in the middle ground. She feels vulnerable and is anxious to reach the sanctuary of school. In the Cavani school, almost 80% of the children come from shanty towns. In her class, Nasta finally gets a chance to shine, as if she has left behind the tragedy of her life as a little undocumented immigrant girl. Votre Marion est une bonne petite élève. Ce serait dommage qu'elle s'arrête là. Son composition française a été très remarqué par Monsieur l'inspecteur. When he is preparing to go hunting, Mabali likes his machete to be razor sharp. <laughs> His father, Jules, has offered the children a chance to accompany the adults on a hunt before returning to school. The pathway takes them into the wildest parts of the forests. The youngsters are surrounded by the best hunters in the village. For hunting, spears are used, sometimes rifles, but mostly traps. <laughs> One of the traps that the previous day has snared a fat porcupine. A nice catch, it will be traded for some rice and palm wine. <laughs> The Begeli have set up a hunting camp deep in the forest. This is where they shelter from heavy rain and prepare their catch. Mabali and his friends love these shared moments at the camp with the adults. This is where they learn that the forest has much to give to those who respect it.
The adults rest up in the hut before spending all night hunting. The youngsters know that the following day they must walk back to school. At midday, school stops for Nasta. It's time to vacate the classroom for other pupils. There are so many children to educate in Mayotte that the school works in shifts like a factory that never stops. It is 10 o'clock in the morning and Nasta is making her way back to the shanty town. She won't resume classes for another three hours. At this time of the morning, the shanty town is calm. Once home in the silence of her shack open to the four winds, Nasta once again becomes the Cinderella of the shanty towns, industrious and meticulous. improvised kitchen cabinet beneath the living room table, each pan has its place. Little brother Karim is home for lunch. There's no canteen at his school. And Hell keeps a close eye on the traffic. He is proud of the watchfulness that protects his elder brother. It is now one and a half hours since they left home. To pass the time, they let their childlike imagination transcend reality. The median strips in the middle of the traffic lanes become islands and rivers, Walkways are bridges over canyons. No te bajes 
One last bus ride down the finishing straight towards school. On the sidewalks of the neighborhoods in southern Mexico City, the children savor victory, having made it safely once again. And Hal finally relaxes and has fun guiding himself using Alfredo's white stick. Alone, the pair of them have managed to cross the urban jungle of the world's third largest city. Yes, yes. Alfredo's school specializes in the education of visually impaired children. His familiarity with Braille in which the school textbooks are written gives him access to a broad range of knowledge and allows him to further his education. Mabali leads the way as the gang heads back to school. A three-hour walk through the forest lies ahead. <laughs> Anguande says goodbye to the big tree that marks the exit of the encampment. They won't be back for another three months. The jungle that can swallow you up holds no fears for these young pygmies. For them, it is a playground. The forest is their world. It feeds them, shelters them, and provides them with a simple life. On the way to school, alone and without their parents, Mabali dreams he is a hunter. He has spotted a rat hole. If he can capture some game, he will return to school a hero. Groping around in the burrow, Mabali has no fear of being bitten. He feels around for the heat of an animal or some fresh food. Unfortunately, the rat hole is cold and its cellar is empty. The animal has deserted the burrow. Hello, 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 
The gang's favorite moment on the way to school is here at the river. Pounded by the hands of the girls, the river becomes an aquatic symbolum. The final descent. The waterfall marks the exit from the forest. They will soon be at school. At the bottom of the falls, a car from the school's boarding house where they will live until the next vacation is waiting for them. Nasta often counts her steps as she walks to school, although she has never produced a definitive total. During the rainy season, when the roads are thick with mud, the journey seems even longer. Nasta understands that the walk to school amid the corrugated metal may one day earn her a ticket out of the shanty town. While the walk is often tiring, Nasta wouldn't miss school for anything in the world. School brings the promise of a better life and justifies her parents' sacrifices. In her primary school class, Nasta feels happy, grateful for the education she receives as she takes the first tentative steps towards her future. Alfredo has gained in confidence. He now hopes to enroll in a conventional school closer to home. Ne manquez plus les classes. Celui qui va manquer la classe, il aura zéro. Armed with his culture and schooling, Mabali knows that when he grows up, he will be able to defend the interests of the Pageli pygmies. Manejar un carro. 